Hey, Canucks fans, the Canucks ran two full practices today at UBC, and their line combos and D pairings maybe give us a bit of an indication of what they might be looking at, not necessarily for the next preseason games, rather for opening night down the road two weeks from now. So let's get into it. The first group this morning was obviously the stronger group, and you can tell just from the names that um, that I'll be talking about for the next few minutes. And the first line was Pedersen, Kuzmenko, Hoglander. Second line was Miller, Besser, Di Giuseppe. The third line was Suter, Garland, and Beauvillier. And the fourth line was Bluger between Aman and Studnika. So let's talk about these forwards first. Before I should talk about before I talk about these guys, it's important to know that Ilya Mikheyev was at this practice in a non-contact jersey, or at least they weren't uh, putting him through any contact. He wasn't actually on in the line rushes. So although he was wearing the same color as the top line of Pedersen and Kuzmenko, technically it, that's Hoglander's spot. And I think the fact that Mikheyev wasn't a full participant in practice and he did leave practice early. Everyone's saying it's not a setback and rather just more, not even precautionary, rather I think he's just easing into it. Remember, he's missed the last few days of training camp. He did not play in the preseason game. He left camp early on the first day. So uh, not only his knee injury that he's recovering from, but the personal issues that he was dealing with as well. Looks like they are truly easing him in. I would not be surprised if he doesn't uh, start the season on the active roster. But we got two weeks to figure that out. But important to note that Mikheyev did skate with the team but not a completely full participant, and then left practice early. Don't want to speculate. Uh, let's ch- hopefully chalk it up to easing his way back in. So again, you had Pedersen between Kuzmeko and Huglander, Miller, Besser, Di Giuseppe, Suter with Garland and Bovile, and Bluger with Oman and Stadnika. Noticeably absent from this group is Dakota Joshua and Vasily Podkolz, and I'll get to those guys in a second. So no surprise with Pedersen, Kuzmenko, and Hoglander. That's the line they've been running with since the starting training camp. The second line was Miller, Besser, and used to be Podkolzin. Podkolzin did not fare well in the game against Calgary on Sunday night. So right now it's Miller, Besser, and Di Giuseppe. We know how much Rick Toggett does in lo- uh, indeed love his Phil Di Giuseppe and the way he plays with structure and uh, and plays well in the system, so to speak. Third line, this is the line where I think maybe such an improvement over the Canucks last season, especially these guys can stick together, play together, is Pew Suter between Connor Garland and Anthony Beauvillier. Yes, expensive wingers for sure, each of Garland and Beauvillier making over $4 million, but if this can be a, give you a third line that can provide offense, be tough to play against, um, I like it. I like it a lot, and Suter and Garland have been together basically all of training camp. Then a fourth line of Bluger between Stadnika and Oman. You, you think those plays, those instead of Stadnika and Oman would be Joshua and Podkolzin, but Stadnika has been one of the pleasant surprises in training camp, and then Niels Oman probably outplaying Dakota Joshua. I also wonder if Joshua is hurt or banged up a little bit. We know he got tied up with Tanev in that Calgary game on Sunday night. And then on D, this is very interesting. You had Quinn Hughes with Cole McWard. And then Cole and Hronik, that's a pairing that we've seen since the start of training camp. I think they're going to stick with that. And then uh, the massive pairing of Susie and Myers. And then the extra pairing of uh, Breezeball and Wolanin. No surprise that it's Breezeball and Wolanin because they did not make the trip to Calgary. Remember, I talked about how the six defensemen that played in Calgary likely not going to make the team to start off. And therefore, it makes sense that Breezeball and Wolanin are playing with this, practicing with this, this the A side, so to speak. And the interesting one here to me is Cole McCord with Quinn Hughes. McCord signed late last season and a right shot defenseman. And we've talked about how Rick Tockett likes a lefty and a righty. He doesn't like a lefty necessarily playing on the right side. So then you limit your options. You only have Horonic, Myers, technically Wu, Juleson, and Willan, uh, excuse me, McCord and Johansson. Johansson's not ready. Wu played very bad on Sunday. And so did Juleson. So maybe Cole McCord is going to get a chance to play with Quinn, Quinn Hughes. Again, it's just one practice. And just because they skated with certain guys today doesn't mean that's how it's going to look on October 11th. But um, I just as I don't want to read too much into these pairings and combos, you also want to read something into it as you wouldn't simply just throw away a practice or waste a practice without actually having some intentional thought between behind these combinations. So the Ian Cole, Philip Hronick, I think that's one that we're going to see as a solid second pairing all season. Then if you have Susie and Myers playing as a third pairing, even if uh, they might get more than third, uh, typical third pairing minutes, then I think we're okay. So it's really fascinating to see if Cole McCord can uh, do enough 
to keep up and and be that solid stay at home complimentary piece for Quinn Hughes. So once again, these lines, they probably aren't even the lines that we see in Toronto Knights exhibition game against Edmonton because they have Thursday night against Seattle. You're probably taking this group of 18 skaters and then kind of divvying them up half and half. Two of the four lines go to um, Edmonton. The other two lines go to Seattle. Then uh, you know one or two of the parents go to Edmonton. D one or two go to Seattle, and then you fill in with the rest of the guys. A lot of the guys that we saw Sunday night against Calgary. So I think this is more not so much thinking about who's going to play with who tomorrow night in Edmonton, rather who might play with who ne- and two Wednesdays from now when the Canucks host Edmonton to kick off their season. So that's Group A with the surprises again. Mikheyev there, but leaving early. No Pod Colson. No. Dakota Joshua and Cole McCord playing with Quinn Hughes. I think those are the storylines to me that come out of that first grouping. Then we'll just spend a couple of minutes on the second group that came, uh, that was after lunch. And this was Ratu between Joshua and Baines. This was Drives between Carlson and Puck Colson. Sasson, McDonough and Bloom. Waters between Nielsen and Klimovich. So no surprises here aside from the two I've talked about already. Joshua and Puck Colson, the two left wingers playing with the uh, the second group, so to speak, today. You know, Archie Baines, we were wondering if he would get a, a look with the big club. So as of now, he seems to be on the outside looking in, and no surprises with the rest of those forwards. Then on D, you had Matt Irwin with Noah Juleson. You had Akito Hirose with Jet Wu, the all half-Asian line uh, pairing. And then Jack Rathbone with Philip Johansson. So uh, five of these guys, Irwin, Juleson, Rathbone, Hirose, and Wu. They all played on Sunday night, and they're all in the second grouping, even though Hirose was the best of them. But remember, Akito Hirose does not have to clear waivers to get sent down to Abbotsford, so you got to keep that in mind as well. He's probably a, a midseason call-up as opposed to starting the team, starting the season with the team. So Philip Johansson was the only one who did not play on Sunday who's in this group, whereas Cole McCord did play on Sunday, but he got, quote, promoted to the first group this morning. So... Aside from the the Joshua and Paul Colson, uh, that's the the when you look at these two groupings now together, the morning group and the afternoon group. To me, on offense, the biggest the biggest uh, storyline is indeed that Jack Sednika and Neil Zaman are in the A group, and then Dakota Joshua and Vasily Paul Colson are in the B group. So that's kind of the the thing that stands out to me with the forwards. And on D, the fact that McCord is getting to ride shotgun along Quinn Hughes at least for today. And then um, no other surprises other than uh, I thought that maybe either Matt Irwin or, or Kito Horose might get a look with the with the A group. And that still might be the case. Um, but right now it's Breezeball and Wolan as the two extra skaters there on D. Finally, don't forget that uh, as I break down all these pairings and line combos that they'll likely split them because you... Uh, you can't ha- you can't send that B team anywhere. There's not enough uh, NHL veterans on there, so you're gonna have to mix and match between these two groups. But at least the A group gives you a bit of thought into what Rick Tockett and the coaching staff are thinking about in anticipation of the season opener on October the 11th. Finally, a quick update to you uh, for you. As I mentioned on my live streams uh, last couple of days, I got my cast off. Uh, remember, I ruptured my Achilles tendon six and a half weeks ago. I got my cast off, but I'm now in a walking boot. Back to a walking boot. Still not weight-bearing. It surprised me a little bit, but my doctor is quite conservative and he wants me to not do too much weight-bearing. So it's another six weeks. Now no cast, but wearing the walking boots. So I, the, the, the silver lining is I get to use my amazing scooter for another six weeks at least. So thanks for the thoughts, the prayers, the, uh, the, the messages, the concern. I'm doing fine. Just a little bit getting used to the, the walking boot on my leg now instead of the cast, but at least I can take it off to shower and at least I can, I can wash my leg and my foot once in a while now. And I'm sure that's a relief to everyone who I live with. Okay, right, Canucks fans, let me know what you thought about those lines, about those deep pairings. What do you read into them? Are you kind of uh, looking at the same things that I'm kind of looking at? Who's missing? Who's not, who's there? And who's playing with who? Or to you, does it not make a difference until two weeks from now? Anyways, let me know in the comments below. I'd love to hear your thoughts. As always, shout out to my sponsors, Van City Experts Real Estate, Perform and Transform, Personal Training Weight Loss. Thank you, legendary Lucas Gates, legendary Carol Bovalander, legendary Andrew Chang, Hall of Fame and franchise members as well. Thanks for your support. And thanks to all you for liking this video, for subscribing, and most importantly, for watching the videos. I always appreciate you. I never take you for granted. On your way out, subscribe, like the video, leave a donation, become a member, upgrade your membership, and leave a comment down below. 
your thoughts on these line combos and deep pairings as we are two weeks and one day away from the start of the regular season. I have a live stream tonight at 11 p.m. We'll talk about this a bit more. I hope to see you then. Otherwise, stay safe, stay healthy, take care of yourselves, and take care of each other. God bless, and go Canucks go.